I'm glad the lighting is good. The lighting is good. Hey guys and welcome back to the video. This is a case that I was very interested in and I felt that you would be too. So without further ado, let's get into the case of Tiara Williams. So Tiara Williams was born in Greensboro, North Carolina, June 18th, 1996. So for the first few years of her life, her parents were actually married and together. Um, until they decided to split up when Tiara was around seven or eight. So it is stated multiple places that she was very close with her mom, Danielle, as well as her brother. But as far as her relationship with her biological father after the divorce, there isn't a lot of mention for that. A lot of interviews that I've watched, I haven't really seen him in either. So Tiara was known to be a very nurturing person, a very kind young lady, really sweet. Those are all words to describe Tiara, not to mention beautiful. She's absolutely gorgeous. So Tiara went to Dudley High School there in North Carolina, where she had a pretty active and thriving social life, both um, in a person as well as online. She did well in high school. She even dated some, so she had some boyfriends. She was a social butterfly. She knew how to be around people, and most of the people that she was around really liked her. But one thing I will say about her mom, Danielle, is that even though Tiara was a little bit of a social butterfly, her mom kept really close tabs on her. So Tiara really wasn't doing much that her mom did not know about. So in Tiara's senior year of high school, she decided to move into a smaller apartment with her grandmother. They were called the Stony Brook Apartments, and it was right off of Randleman Road. I have some notes here so I don't get it wrong. But her reasoning for doing this is that she kind of told everyone she didn't feel like her grandmother should be staying alone, living alone. She needed some more company. However, a lot of her friends have admitted that the real reason she did it was that she could get a little bit of independence. You know, she's a senior in high school, about to turn 18. She wanted a little space. I've already told you her mom kind of kept really close, tight tabs on her and they were starting to argue just a little bit. Nothing major, regular, probably teenage mother and daughter type stuff. However, Tiara thought that putting some space in between them would be really good. And it seems like she was right because they stayed close um, all the way throughout the time that Tiara was there, you know, up until the point that she disappeared. Basically, the soon to be 18 year old just needed a break. So in 2014, Tiara graduated from high school, from Dudley High School. At that point, she decided that she didn't want to go straight to college. She wanted to take a year off just to kind of get her bearings, work a little bit, enjoy life because she just went through a lot of years of school and then she had plans on going to school the next year. So that next spring, she enrolled at the Gulliford Technical Community College. Um, and she was planning on majoring in early childhood development because she loved working with children. But her passion, just to tell you a lot about this young lady, her passion was working with kids that have developmental disabilities and delays. If you know anything about that demographic of kids, they're special kids, they need special love and special people to work with them. Tiara was one of those people. So on January 7, 2016, Tiara headed on over to the Gulliford Technical Community College because she was enrolling in school. She was getting all of her paperwork, her schedules, like getting her IDs made. This was such a fun and exciting time for her and it showed that she was a woman of her word. She took a year off, 
she decided to get right back in school to make some of her dreams come true. So like I said, she headed over to the college around 8 a.m. and after getting everything done, going home, resting a bit, around 6 o'clock p.m., Tiara headed to Danielle, her mother's apartment, just so she can spend some time with her, share her exciting news, and help her mom take down the Christmas tree. Danielle was especially proud of Tiara and actually even offered to take her shopping for some things the next day. Tiara needed some textbooks, some school supplies, and of course, a laptop. So Tiara spent most of the time with her mom just kind of laughing, catching up, just spending quality time until her boyfriend Aaron as well as her little brother came to the home to join in some of the family fun. Aaron and Tiara's little brother, Aaron is her boyfriend, and Tiara's little brother, they're actually really good friends, so they hung out quite a bit. So around 8 o'clock p.m. that night, Tiara, her boyfriend Aaron, as well as her little brother, left the mom's house and headed over to her grandmother's house to get something to eat. I was actually watching um, a True Crime Daily's interview on this and the grandmother actually made me laugh. She said that Tiara loved her mom, but she said, but I can cook better. So the kids always gathered at the grandmother's house for food, for dinner, lunch, and I'm sure the grandmother loved that, you know, it made her feel really good. So as they were heading out, Tiara said bye to her mother, her mother Danielle said bye to her, but I know Danielle did not think that this was going to be the last time that she would see her baby girl. So after they ate at the grandmother's house, they watched TV, just kind of hung out, talked, shot the breeze until Tiara informed them this was around 8.30. She got a text that said, um, and she said that she was basically going out to meet up with a friend. Now she said the name of this friend was Travis and Aaron, her boyfriend, didn't recognize the name, but he didn't really think anything of it. Now Tiara and Aaron's relationship, from everything that I've read and gathered, it was a slightly maybe on again, off again type relationship. Aaron knew that he had a prize basically. So in my mind, this is just my opinion, Aaron didn't really want to rock the boat too much with Tiara because she had said to him before that she was feeling a little bit smothered. So I'm sure when she said that she was going to meet with Travis, you know, all these alarm bells and whistles went off in Aaron's head like, who is Travis? I don't know a Travis. Who is this guy? Who are you meeting with? Why are you meeting with the guy? You know, but it, I feel like he bit his tongue and suppressed all of that because he didn't want to come off clingy or needy or just like super obsessed or display any type of behavior that would push her back more. Basically, Aaron just wanted to be the chill, laid-back, low-key boyfriend. So Aaron, Tiara, and Tiara's little brother left the grandmother's house. They were walking in the same direction. Aaron and the little brother ended up going to Aaron's house to finish playing some video games. And Tiara said that she would be back in an hour. Um, it wasn't going to take her long because her friend Travis stayed in the same apartment complex. Now let me just say this, Aaron is good because as soon as Tiara would have hit that corner, I would have been right behind her to figure out who Travis is, where we're going. I need some details because just giving me a random name is not sitting well with me. Now, the interesting part is her phone GPS showed that she initially made it to her friend's apartment, but then the phone GPS shut off right after that. So basically her phone either died or was manually shut off, turn, turned off. Now another little tidbit of information, Tiara's mother spoke to the friends that um, Tiara was supposedly going to see and they said, we never saw her that night. Now I don't know if you guys know, especially some of you young ladies, like I remember back in the day back then it's like you know you would tell somebody one thing like yeah i'm going here and be like way the heck on the other side of town i was so guilty with that with my parents even my boyfriend sometime like i did that all the time 
So I wonder if that's what Tiara said, like, hey, I'm going, I'm just going to swing by their house really quickly, knowing that, you know, she had no intention of going over there, but it was just a smooth transition out of the house. Even though she said the name Travis, I don't know. It's a lot to think about. So around 9.30, Erin and her little brother um, started to realize, hey, she never came back. We don't know where she is. You know, 9.30 came and went and she never returned home. She didn't text Erin and her phone was going straight to voicemail whenever they tried to call her. So, you know, in their minds, they're thinking, well, maybe she just didn't come over here. She probably went back to, you know, grandma's house. So let's just head over there. They went to the grandmother's house to wait for her. And, you know, they found out that she hadn't messaged the grandmother either. She hadn't called her. Now, I will say big ups to Aaron and the little brother because, you know, sometimes guys will just like, oh, well, she hasn't called back. But yeah, that's OK. Or she was supposed to be here at this time, but it's OK. You know, a little after 930, they were thinking, OK, something's wrong. Where is this girl at? This isn't right. I felt like that was really good. So they end up just kind of playing video games, falling asleep. The next morning they woke up, which was January 8th, around seven o'clock. Checked his phone, still had not heard from Tiara. This was getting really strange. Now, Aaron had a scheduled appointment that he couldn't miss that morning. So he was like, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my appointment, like wherever she is, whatever. I'll see her once I get back over there, you know, after his appointment was done. Now, once he came back to the apartment, he realized Tiara still wasn't there. So at this point, Aaron is saying, okay, look, this is bigger than me, it's above me now, I need reinforcements. So he woke up the grandmother, like, look, this is what's going on. Tierra's not here. She was supposed to be here last night. I came back. I waited on her. She never got here. You know, I left. I came back this morning. She's still not here. Something's going on. So grandma says, all right, all right, keep it together because she'll answer my call. You know, she may not answer your call, but she's going to answer my call. So grandmother calls her. Phone goes straight to voicemail again. So grandma says, all right, I didn't want to do this. Let me call Danielle. Let me call um, Tiara's mama. Because like I said, Danielle kept pretty close tabs on Tiara. And I bet Tiara didn't tell Miss Danielle where she was heading that night or that she was even going to go out. So she called Danielle and said, hey, have you seen Tiara? She never came back. She's not answering calls. Something's going on. So Danielle hadn't seen Tiara, hadn't spoken to Tiara, hadn't texted with Tiara since the day before when everyone was at her house helping her take down the Christmas tree. So Miss Danielle was not playing. She's like, look, I don't know what's going on, but something's not right. Aaron, come outside because we need to talk. We need to figure out what's going on. We need a plan of attack. So Aaron and Tiara's mom met up around noon, maybe a little bit after noon. And Miss Danielle was like, spill it, tell me everything. So Aaron said, hey, um, just inform you, Tiara was supposed to go meet someone named Travis. Um, and Danielle was like, well, who is Travis? And he said, well, I don't know. So Miss Danielle is like, well, why didn't you ask? Why didn't you figure out who this was? Why would you let your girlfriend just go and meet randomly with some man that you don't know? So she kind of got in Aaron's little behind a little bit, you know what I mean? But this isn't the time or the place or the situation to chastise him. You still have to, to find your baby girl. So she was like, okay, let's figure it out. Plus, Aaron told her like, look, you know, we're off and on. I didn't want to come off as extra irky. So I just, you know, I let Tiara do Tiara. So as frustrating as that was, Miss Danielle knew that they had to figure out what was going on. Now she didn't recognize the name Travis either. She had never heard that name, but Miss Danielle had a plan. So she was like, let me get in this girl's Facebook account because like I said, she was social. Even, you know, she had an online presence. So she was on Facebook a lot. So Miss Danielle being the hero, the shero that she is, she cracked into Tiara's Facebook account. Um, went through all her messages, didn't see anyone named Travis even on her friends list. Now, one thing Miss Danielle did find was that Tiara had been messaging an ex-boyfriend of hers and one that wasn't just well received in the family. 
So she was thinking, I wonder if Travis is an alias for the ex-boyfriend's name because if Tiara said, hey, I'm gonna meet with, you know, the ex-boyfriend, this person, you know, I'm sure her brother, her current boyfriend would be like, oh, no, you're not. We all, we all going to meet with him then. So maybe she used an alias for that. So Miss Danielle didn't report Tiara missing until about 8 p.m. that night on January 8th um, after trying to find Tiara herself. So it's interesting to note, Tiara didn't have a history of running away. She didn't have a history of going places and not telling someone where she was. She didn't have any problems at home that would make her just decide to get up and leave it all. So everyone knew that this wasn't right. This was not in her character. This wasn't a, a habit of hers. So the family went ahead and did their own search at the Stony Book Apartments However, they really didn't find anything. Nobody admitted to seeing anything. So at this time, the police had the case as well. They searched the apartment complex. They checked in the grandmother's apartment. They couldn't find anything or any reason that Tiara would just up and leave. They didn't see anything that would say that, hey, she has been in this location. They basically just didn't find anything. The family wasn't one just to sit down on their hands and wait for the police to do their work. They were busy passing out flyers. I found one, I was reading um, some comments on another video and this one young lady said, oh, I actually met Tiara's grandmother because she handed me flyers outside of Walgreens. So each member of the family went to a different location and was handing out flyers with Tiara's picture on it so that way they can get the word out like, hey, our baby is missing. So the case was given to the CAP squad on January 11th. CAP, Crimes Against Persons on January 11th. Um, Miss Danielle spoke to the detectives about what she thought could have happened to Tiara, but no one really knew for sure. Um, she showed them the Facebook messages and who she thought Travis might be. Remember I told you the ex-boyfriend and she gave the detectives Tiara's ex-boyfriend's real name and information so they can track him down. So basically he was now a person of interest since he was or could have been the last person to see Tiara. So the investigators brought him in for questioning and at first he denied even talking to her. He said, no, I haven't seen her. I haven't talked to her in a long time. Like. What are you talking about? I don't know anything about it. So the investigator showed him his messages that he had written Tiara and their messages back and forth the night that she disappeared. And of course his story changes. Now, if you know anything about true crime, if you're dealing with someone and they start lying and making up stories, it's just not a good look. And of course it's scary, nerve wracking, talking to police, dealing with police officers, I get it. But if you're dealing with a missing persons case, and now you start lying and they have the information and they're confronting you with it, it just doesn't paint you in a good light. So he admitted to um, sending her some messages. She sent him some and they actually decided to meet up on the night that she disappeared. And he said that they met up. Um, she sat in his car and talked about 20, 30 minutes. And then she left his car. She got out of his car and was walking back towards her grandmother's apartment. Now, me, if you have a young lady that you cared about at one point since you guys were together, why would you let her get out the car and walk on her own in a dark apartment complex? It's 8.30, you know, it's January, so it's winter time. It's gonna be dark. This is North Carolina. Um, even if you couldn't get out and physically walk her to the complex, you get out and you stand in a location where you can see her or you move your car somewhere so you can see her go up the stairs, go down the stairs, go in the door. You just don't leave women unprotected. So um, the messages between the two, you know, it really, it basically backed his story. There wasn't any mean text messages after a while. I mean, everything was good. It seems like she met up with him and left. So they did search his car. Um, they searched everything of his. They didn't find any evidence of Tiara. They didn't find any evidence of any foul play, period. So there was no evidence to suggest that the ex-boyfriend hurt Tiara in any type of way. 
So with a severe lack of evidence, investigators began to dig deeper into Tiara's life and found out that she had another ex-boyfriend. This young man's name was Trey. Basically, Tiara still loved Trey and Trey still loved Tiara. And the breakup didn't really end on bad terms. So they did some background checks on him, checked into his story, his alibi. They couldn't find anything um, that would connect Trey to this. He answered all of the questions they had and basically Danielle's mom and family believed that Trey was innocent. He was just as upset about her going missing as they were. You can tell that this young man really loved Tiara. So, you know, after about a week, they aren't getting anywhere. They decide to go ahead and put out a press release to the media, which was good because we know sometimes in some of these cases, when you look like me or Tiara, sometimes you don't really get that media push that you need. Um, so luckily the media there in North Carolina picked it up. They ran the story. They put up I mean, even billboards around the area with her picture on it to search for her. And I'm so glad the police department did not just sweep this under the rug and say, oh, it's probably just another, you know, runaway case. They actually got on it pretty quickly. So kudos to the Greensboro Police Department. So her family even set up a hotline, which was ran by her grandfather, who was a former bail bondsman. And it was just basically to get tips, anything they could find or do to be able to, you know, locate Tiara. So a couple of days after the hotline was set up, they were just getting numerous calls. One call in particular was from a sanitation worker in High Point, North Carolina. And he was basically saying that he saw a girl who extremely <laughs> resembled Tiara. Um, walking down the street wearing a dark jacket and she was extremely out of it, like out of it, out of it. Then they received tips that, you know, they checked that out, it wasn't her. They received tips that she was dead and her body was in a tractor trailer somewhere. All these tips came up empty, but I'm sure every tip that the family heard, they were like, oh my God, is this it? Is this the one that's gonna to bring Tiara home? So on February 20th, there was an unanticipated development. You remember I told you Trey or uh, Tierra's ex-boyfriend, Trey, the one that she loved and he loved her. Well, he was found shot dead in his apartment in Greensboro. So at first the police were like, wait a minute, was this, you know, did he have something to do with it? What's going on? But it turns out it was just a fight between he and his roommate that got severely out of hand. So a few more tips came in. Um, most of them led to nothing, but one tip in particular was pretty interesting. So in April of 2016, a waitress from the Waffle House in Jessup, Georgia, Jessup, Georgia, called to say that they thought they had seen Tiara several times coming into the restaurant, you know, on a pretty regular pattern. So she was always with an, a group of girls, but she never made eye contact. She was really withdrawn. They just felt like something was wrong. Um, she never spoke, nothing. So Grandpa Daryl decided to drive out to Jessup to investigate this claim. But by the time that he got there, the group of girls had stopped coming into the Waffle House. I wonder if something the employee said, or maybe you know the contact with that, I wonder if that kind of scared them off. I don't know. So the waitress or server suggested maybe tracking some motels in the area because the girls were most likely um, prostitutes, working girls, and there were several pimps around. So Grandpa Daryl, like I said, he was a formal bell, I can't say that word, bell bondsman. Man, he got to work. He started checking motels and strip clubs and just everywhere that if someone were to be human trafficked, that they could be. Grandpa Daryl was the OG. All he wanted was his grandchild back and he was planning on doing it by any means necessary. He would routinely, you know, go out, take road trips to this area to find this child. He would go in all of these places that weren't even safe just to see if he could save his granddaughter's life. So he was looking everywhere and one of the hotel managers said, hey, there's a girl that looks just like this. She's staying with a pimp, you know, so he finally 
uh, located the girl. He called the police. It was a girl that looked like Tiara, but it wasn't Tiara. So the last supposed sighting of Tiara came through on June 13th, 2016. An actual relative, I believe a cousin of Tiara's, thought that she saw Tiara at the DMV in Greensboro, North Carolina. So you know, imagine she's just going maybe to get her license renewed or something. She looks up, it's her cousin, the one that had been missing. So she's calling like, Tiara, Tiara, Tiara. And you know, the girl looks up and she realizes it's not her cousin after all. So anyway, the police wanted to be sure. So they got a hold of the surveillance um, camera and got the information from that. But once they showed the picture to Danielle, she confirmed like, man, that's not, that's not my baby. So on May 6, 2018, Tiara's case was on an episode of Disappeared. All of you true crime fans, I know you like the show. I love the show myself, but her case was featured and it got a lot of, um, of her story and her picture out there. It showcased the events that led up to her disappearance and the efforts that were made afterwards. And a lot of the story focused on Tiara's grandfather and all the efforts that he made and this crusade that he went on basically by himself to be able to find Tiara. So as I stated, Tiara's mother started a Facebook page. That Facebook page is still up and running. I will leave a link to it in the description box. But as this day, um, the family still keeps an eye out on shows and, and updates and they keep their hopes up. But if she's still alive, as of 2020, she would be 23. So she'll be about 24 this year. All right, guys, so that is the case of Tiara Williams. Now it's time for my wrap up. I have a lot to say. So first off, Tiara was a gorgeous girl, a beautiful girl. I There's been so much speculation. I don't think the current boyfriend, Aaron, had anything to do with it. Um, sometimes you just don't want to rock the boat, especially if you're in a relationship and the relationship is kind of rocky anyway, you don't want to add momentum to the rocking. He was probably like, I don't like this. I don't know, but I don't like this. And I don't want to be, I don't want to push her basically by saying, who is this? Where are you going? Can I come? You know, he just didn't want to do that. He made a dumb decision, but I don't think he made any criminal intent. I don't think he's responsible for the disappearance of Tiara. I don't know why. The other ex-boyfriend to me just seems, it seems like something is there. I can't tell you why. You know, usually in cases like this, sometimes the family has something to do with it. I don't think so. I don't, I think that ex-boyfriend holds the key to what happened to Tiara. I don't have any reasoning for thinking that. The police have supposedly already checked him and cleared it. It's just something about that story doesn't sit right. What are the chances of that? In a lot of interviews that I've read, it just kind of spoke about how he was very kind of pushy and just wanted her and just really wasn't one to take no for an answer. And I feel that if she's moving on with her life, bettering herself and has a new man, he probably just couldn't handle it. I cannot stand a weak, lame man they can't handle a woman bettering herself with or without him. Because truth be told, if he was acting right and if he was doing what he was supposed to do, she'd probably still be with you. Boom. So you guys, that's the case of Tiara Williams. Comment down below what you think about this case. Who do you think is responsible? Um, do you think like me, like maybe it's the ex-boyfriend or do you think an unknown factor came in? and just kind of threw a monkey wrench in everything. I'd be so interested in hearing your opinions down below in the comments section. As always, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next video. Bye guys.